Pokemon Adventures is coming to an end. Well, not actually, but it very well could be, much sooner rather than later. So let's talk about it. Since this is one of those videos, I gotta do a quick brief history on Pokemon Adventures for those who don't know. Pokemon Adventures is the main Pokemon manga that adapts from the Pokemon games. There are other Pokemon manga that cover the games, but they come and go without much fanfare. Pokemon Adventures, however, is a different case. It started in 1997 and has been going ever since, with some hiatuses every now and again. But if you really think about it, that's pretty crazy. This manga has been going on for 26 years, even longer than One Piece by just a few months. And through all of those years, there's been one man leading the charge. This of course being the series author, Hidenori Kusaka. This guy loves Pokemon, if that wasn't evident enough by his continued work on the series. As for the art, we've had Mato, a lady who covered the first 9 volumes of the manga before falling ill and having to be replaced by Satoshi Yamamoto, who's been illustrating the series ever since. Now, you may be wondering, Vivo, I already know this stuff, what does it have to do with the manga ending? Well, as I said, these guys have been working on the Pokemon manga for years now, practically every month working on a new chapter for their own interpretation of the Pokemon world, and that really isn't easy. You may bring up the argument that there's other manga authors and artists who are doing the same thing, some of which have been even creating manga for weekly serialization as compared to Adventures' monthly serialization. And yeah, you'd be right, but the difference between them is that Yamamoto and Kusaka are working on a story that already exists, and that makes things quite a bit harder than just creating your own world and story. The duo have to find time to play the games and write a story that's not only interesting, but also different from the source material, but also not too different that it's not even a Pokemon story. In an interview they had with Norma Editorial, the duo were asked a question about this very subject. How complex is it to work on a static franchise like Pokemon while introducing your own ideas? In reply, Kusaka said this, Working on Pokemon is difficult. Maybe the most difficult part is that we have to follow the story of another product, which is a video game. We can't afford to create a manga that people playing the video games don't like. On the other hand, if everything was exactly the same between the games and adaptation, the manga would be boring. When you're playing a Pokemon game, you put yourself into the character, whereas an established character has to drive the story in a manga. We have to create good characters and surprise people as they're reading. That balance between what we have to change and what remains the same is probably the most difficult part. As for Yamamoto, he said this, Every time there's a new video game, there's also a design team responsible for the new Pokemon creatures and humans. I receive their work and have to follow and respect some guidelines, so I try to attach my own creativity to all of that. But there's also some parts where I have more freedom, so that's up to my own imagination. For example, there's an original idea in the manga devised by me, which is that every character has their own unique way of catching Pokemon. So, as you can see, writing around something that already exists isn't the easiest thing in the world. And I don't even think these guys get to play the games early. In fact, I even think they play it later. Where us fans of the games will be playing the game as soon as it comes out, these guys will have to be working on the previous arc. And that's pretty much how things have been since the beginning. But that was when the author and artist duo were younger and could work much easier. Now however, they're either reaching their 60s or already in their 60s, with responsibilities such as spending time with their family. If I were to compare them to some people in terms of their age, these guys are similar to Dragon Ball's Akira Toriyama and Jojo's Hirohiko Araki. Earlier, I mentioned about the serialization schedule of the manga being a monthly schedule. And yes, that's the case. But I didn't mention how sometimes they'd be working on multiple arcs at the same time due to remakes of games. For example, the Ruby and Sapphire arc, Fire Red and Leaf Green arc, and Emerald arc were at one point all being made at the same time. So you can imagine how hectic that was, especially when considering all the arcs were connected and would feature a massive crossover by the end of things. This definitely would have been tough for the duo and is probably the reason why we don't see many crossovers between the Dex holders in the future arcs. Nowadays, the team will try work on one arc at a time as not to damage their health in their growing ages. And on one hand, this is a really good thing. We've seen Kusaga have to take a hiatus once because he was ill, and we've also seen what happened with Mato, who literally had to stop working on the series. When it comes to manga, the author's health is very crucial. If you want even more examples, look at Hunter x Hunter. But on the other hand, in my opinion, this slowing down signals a nearing end. Remakes in the world of Pokemon Adventures were some of my favourite arcs, for the sole reason being, they let us return to regions and see characters we already know and love, slightly older with new evolutions to their Pokemon. The main case in point, of course, being the Heart Gold and Soul Silver arcs. And even though these remake arcs were really short, they were still great. However, with the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee games, we had our first occurrence of not getting an arc to adapt to the mainline games. In this scenario, you could argue that they weren't mainline games, 
but in my opinion, I'd still say they were. Next in the line of remakes, we have Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which also didn't get adapted. Once again, you can bring up an argument of that these games didn't have any new content, so there was nothing new to adapt. And honestly, that may be true, but for this last example, I can't see it being anything other than a missed opportunity. The game in question I'm talking about is Legends Arceus. This game got absolutely no recognition in Pokemon Adventures, not even a small reference as far as I'm aware. And a lot of fans, me included, wanted to see this get adapted so we could reunite with the Sinnoh gang in a new but old environment. But alas, we never got anything. And this is because of the speed of the games being released and the team not being able to write and draw fast enough to make stories whilst the games are still relevant. Which now brings me to why I said the series might be ending. I'm not necessarily trying to say the Pokemon Adventures will be ending after Scarlet and Violet, as right now that series has been going on with no problems. But I do think the series will be ending sooner rather than later, unless something were to change with the rate Pokemon games are getting pumped out. Our favourite author and artist pair aren't getting any younger, so it might be time for a switch. Okay, okay, calm down. I understand Pokemon Adventures as a series is nothing without these two, but it's not uncommon for Mangaka to take a step back from leading their series in order for someone younger and more capable to take the lead. Look at Dragon Ball Super and Boruto for example. Toriyama and Kishimoto still help out and are involved in their series, but they got a new artist to pick up where they left. Kusaka has been writing the series ever since the beginning, so it wouldn't be fair to switch him out completely, but for Yamamoto, as painful as it is to say, him retiring as the artist and passing the torch to someone new may be the best course of action, especially if they can draw fast, allowing remakes to return to the schedule. Yamamoto is a really good artist and he's drawn some of my favourite panels in all of manga, but you can't deny the fact that it will definitely get tough on him. In the same interview I mentioned earlier, the team were asked if creating the manga was hard, and Yamamoto said this, Every new Pokemon saga is difficult in terms of transforming the video game content into manga. In my personal case, I have to face the situation of, I'm so sleepy, but I can't sleep now because I have to deliver this work soon. It's my creative strength. I love drawing, but sometimes I can't put everything I want on paper because of the short amount of time. And that makes me suffer. And this was all the way back in 2016. So think about now, but let's not write off Yamamoto yet. In an even better case scenario, maybe the solution would just be simply adding more assistance to help with production. Yamamoto once mentioned he only had one helping him. Although it may be too late for arcs like Legends Arceus or Let's Go, with the rumoured Johto or Unova returns, maybe we'll see a return to form with them. But rather than replacing artists or getting more assistance, let's take a look at another outlook completely. That being the actual end of the Pokemon Adventures continuity and the start of a new Pokemon manga entirely, with both a new author and artists. If the Pokemon anime can get rid of Ash, who knows what the future holds for the Pokemon manga. Although that's not exactly the same case. Now let's talk conclusions. Take this video with a grain of salt. As much as I'd like to think I know my way around Pokemon adventures and the production of the manga, I still don't work in the industry. The best I know about this stuff is from reading Bakuman and learning from Reddit users such as Solax. Also, big shout out to the Reddit because they've made so many graphs and timelines showing the production of the series. I'll link them in the description along with all the other sources such as the interviews I've used. But as I said, take this with a grain of salt. It could just be me being completely dramatic. Or I could be making sense. Let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. Do you think the series could be ending soon? Or do you think it's still got another 20 years going? And of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more Pokemon manga content. And with all that said and done, I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.